Welcome to another broadcast of the Old Country Church. Now Jesus is the only way. He's the only name you'll hear on that day. What price will you bring when you stand before the King? Way. Mine, mine, 
constantly He's mine. Jesus is abiding every day. Oh, keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race that I must run, there are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. I want to be more and more like Jesus. I want to be more and more like Him. I want to be more and more like Jesus. I want to be more and more like Him. So it's wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. Counselor, a Prince of Peace, the mighty God is He, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. I have a message from God's Word. Well, I know the Lord is good. He always told me that He would take care of all my need and strengthen me. So I trust Him, yes I do. In this pilgrim land, He's true. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescued me. He rescued me from troubled water. He rescued me, and now I'm free. He rescued me, and I do love Him. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescued me. If you're troubled in this land and can't find a helping hand, call on Jesus, He will hear you when you call. Never fear the storm or dark, cause you're riding in God's ark. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescues all. He rescued me from troubled water. He rescued me, and now I'm free. He rescued me, and I do love Him. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescued me. Now when trouble comes my way, I call on Jesus and I say, Jesus, fill my heart and set me free. With that Holy Spirit blessed from my being, fear is cast. Jesus, yes, Jesus rescues me. He rescued me from troubled water. He rescued me, and now I'm free. He rescued me, and I do love Him. I know the promises of God are really true, and I'm going to a city that's brand new. You won't find any trouble in that land, but for this next mile, I need The best of us 
will have to face a few when they get me down and no one seems to care and the weight of it is more than I can bear I call on Jesus come and set me free Praise the Lord. Good morning uh, uh, or good afternoon if you're watching this uh, Sunday afternoon on uh, Spectrum TV. Uh, let me uh, twist that up a little bit. There we are. Uh, if you're watching on Spectre TV, Spectrum at 4 p.m. on Sunday afternoons we're on and on Thursday at 10 a.m. and that's uh, also on Spectrum. This program is also uh, broadcast on uh, uh, YouTube and so that if you can catch the YouTube program and then subscribe you'll get my programs which we have over 200 programs there so there's plenty of programs to watch uh, on that's on YouTube this uh, uh, particular day we are going to be uh, reading from the Gospel of John in chapter 1 and the subject this morning is, of course, Jesus, and just who is Jesus, okay? And what was the purpose of his coming to earth? And we watch so many programs today on TV, on the History Channel, and so on, that they speak about Jesus, and who was he in, the mystery of Jesus, and so on and so forth. But the real answers come right from God's Word, and uh, the Gospel of John, uh, the very first verse and second verse are very wonderful verses which will give us a, the message that we're looking for. And so we'll look to the Gospel of John. Open up your Bibles this morning if you have one. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And so here we have the Word of God described here that the Word of God uh, uh, was with God and uh, the Word was God, that the Word was God, that, there, that God and the Word are absolutely united here. And we know that God is, God is uh, 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 a presence and a, a personality that never changes. He had no beginning, and he'll have no end. He's everlasting from age to age, the great I am, the great God. And so here we have the Word of God, who is, we're going to find out, who is this Word of God, okay? And it says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And so this is the description, the wonderful description of the Lord Jesus, that he is the word of God. When we read the book of Revelation, in one part it says that this uh, uh, person came out of heaven, had a big banner across him, and it said, the Word of God, and that was Jesus who came, okay? And uh, some people say that Jesus was a uh, prophet, that he was a great teacher, but if we stop there and we say that he was only a prophet and only a great teacher, we miss our mark, we miss it, because as we find out that God had this great plan to save man, Man had gone astray, away from God. The Bible says all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God. And so that they, men went astray and went out of the way of God. And it was God and it was in his mercy, in his grace, that he re wanted to redeem man and bring man back to him, to have that fellowship relationship with him. And so he sent his son. As we read, uh, uh, we won't be into those chapters today, but we read in chapter 3 and verse 16 that Jesus said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so we have the story of Jesus. We have him coming into the world, this great, the Lamb of God. And, and so we're going to read on here. And uh, uh, starting with verse 6 now, it describes uh, John the Baptist. And it says, And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And the same came as a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. That all men through him might believe. Let's not diminish or make little of these scriptures that some people want to put down because they, 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 I, I've heard that there are people who say, well, Jesus didn't die for all men, only for a certain few select, you know, that God chose to go to heaven, and then the rest God chose that they would go to hell. That's not what the scripture teaches. The Bible says here, look what it says. It says here that the, that the same came to witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. You see, that all men, God wants all men to be saved. All mankind. God, this was, God chose to save all men. Some people say, well, God chose me. Yes, he did. He chose me in that he chose all men. All right? And he chose me that I would become a child of God. And the same is for you, and same for everybody out there that would believe. Here, uh, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear uh, witness of that light. This is talking about John the Baptist. He wasn't the light. He came to bear witness of the light. Okay. Now verse 9. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Now we're getting down to a descriptive form of uh, 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 actually pointing the finger at Jesus, saying he was in the world. He came into the world. All right? Jesus came into this world physically, came into the world. It says the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Now, when we're talking here in this term of the world, we're talking about mankind, okay? That mankind. We know that there, uh, here uh, up at uh, verse... Uh, Three, it says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So not only did the word of God create mankind, but the word of God created everything that we see, the trees, the mountains, the, the, the planets, the suns, the stars, the asteroids, and everything that we can see, and even those things that we cannot see, were created by God and by this word of God, okay? Now we come to uh, uh, describing him a little bit better. In verse 11, it says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. This is when Jesus came to the Jewish people, to the Hebrews, and it says that he came unto his own. What does that mean, he came unto his own? That all through our Old Testament scriptures, we read that there was a chosen generation of people that were called the children of God, the select of God. Those were the descendants of Abraham uh, through Isaac, his son, through Jacob. That 
lineage of people, they were called the children of God. They were the sons of God. And they were given the word of God. They were given the laws of God. They were given the statutes of God that they had to live according to those statutes. And so he could qualify his word by saying, those are my people. And so when we read verse 11 here, and it says, he came unto his own, his own were those people. And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. What a sad statement of truth that we have here, that the very people that were supposed to be waiting for him, and that he had selected to be his own people, they did not receive him. They did not believe. Oh, there were some Jewish people. There was uh, the 12 apostles. There was uh, Mary Magdalene. There was uh, Mary and Martha. There was uh, uh, the brother uh, Lazarus. And there were, we read of many, many other Jewish people who received Christ into their life. But by and large, remember the story of when Jesus was uh, uh, before Pilate and Pilate brought him out. And uh, he asked them, he said, whom shall I uh, deliver unto you? Shall I give you Barabbas or shall I give you Jesus? And they says, give us Barabbas, give us Barabbas. And then uh, Pilate says, well, what about this man? And uh, the cry was loud, crucify him, crucify him. And uh, that was the condemnation and the Jewish people and the Jewish I hierarchy who said let his blood be upon us and upon our children and so the blood of Jesus Christ we pray upon all men on the Jews also and uh, no man should hate the Jew over this but you know the Bible says that because they rejected Christ the Gentiles were given the opportunity to come in this was all in God's plan God knew that this was going to happen and God had planned these things that this would happen and so we're all brought in and uh, uh, I myself being uh, Jewish and uh, uh, Hebrew and Gentile uh, I took the uh, DNA test and they said that I'm like 13 percent Jew that's not very much that's only half my fingers over here I think but anyway the point is that uh, uh, being uh, born of Gentile I have the opportunity to come into the kingdom of God, and I've been grafted into the root, into the vine of Jesus, because there was room for me at the cross. There was room for me. Uh, he came in unto his own, and his own received him not. But look at here. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Now, I, wanted, I just want to uh, a point to this a minute. It says, but to as many as received him. First, first thing you must do is receive him. You must open the door and receive him. And then it says, and to them, to who, who is them? Them that receive him. Okay? Them that receive him. Gave he power to become the sons of God. So they now receive that power, and we receive that power to become the sons of God because we have received him. Okay, we've received Christ into our life. Even to them that believe on his name, that we must have that. This is first century before we have all this uh, uh, 2,000 years of, uh, uh, of theology jumping around at, at us that how simple it is to come into the kingdom of God only to believe on him. The apostle Paul said in the book of Romans in chapter 10 and verse 9 he says that if you will believe that God raised Jesus from the dead thou shall be saved. How simple is that? All we have to do is believe in our heart Believe in our mind. Believe that God did this and God has a place. He'll put us into that vine and you want to be in that vine. Verse 13, which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God. 
This is what must happen to us to come into the kingdom of God. Here it says, which were born not of the blood. In other words, just because mom and dad were Christians, that doesn't make you a Christian. Just because your uncle is a minister, that don't make you a, a child of God. Uh, the blood relationship of one to another cannot bring you into the kingdom of God. Uh, then it says, uh, nor the will of flesh. You know that uh, sometimes uh, that people... Uh, they, they, they have a child and then they say, oh, well, my child, I want my child to be a, 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 a godly person. So I'm going to baptize my little baby. I baptize my baby. So you baptize the baby, the will of the flesh. I want this, the will of the flesh, you know, and baptizing a baby will not save the baby. If, if that baby comes into this world, that baby is already uh, much better off than you or I are because Jesus said such is the kingdom of God these little children all right so that child must mature to the point where he's able to become a sinner the the seed of sin is in him but sinning is where death occurs you know so the the seed of set uh, of that you know it's not a sin to be tempted but it's a sin when we give in to that temptation. And then when, and if that happens, we have to repent before God. Don't let it, don't let it fester in you. Ask God to forgive you of that, okay? Nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God, that God's will. Now we got to read in several places where God says in Timothy and in uh, the, the book of, uh, I think it's 1 Peter, where it says that God will, uh, uh, his will is that all men would be saved. So to be saved, it's very simple. All you have to do is receive him and repent of your sin. Ask him to come into your life. I heard one preacher, he said, uh, you know, you, you can't be saved by a prayer. That's not true. That's not true. If you pray sincerely to God, asking him to forgive you of your sins, he will, and he'll bring you into his kingdom. So uh, a prayer is very important. A, a prayer is twofold. First of all, it's your petition of whatever you're asking. But the moment that you bow your head toward God, you are believing that God will answer your prayer. And so you're, you're, you're uh, uh, by faith, you're receiving God and receiving his word. Now, verse 14, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of only, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace. Jesus did not come to judge or to condemn anyone. He came to save uh, sinners. This is a true saying. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners, sinners. And he does not distinguish between, oh, that sinner I'm going to save and that sinner I'm not going to save. All men, all men can come into the kingdom of God if they repent, if they really, truly believe. And it's not for us to judge who is and who isn't going to come into the kingdom of God. That's his uh, department. That's his place. Of all the things that have happened in the world throughout our generation, we have seen a lot of things happen. While those things were happening, God was on the throne. God has never given up the throne. God has never come off the throne and said, okay, I am, I'm not uh, going to be the uh, God anymore. I'm not going to be the king anymore. He's always been there. And his sovereignty has always been the greatest thing, you know. But within his sovereignty, I, I must say this, that we must understand that uh, because of the nature in which we were created, we were created with a free will, that it, God has given us a chance to make that choice on our own if we want to uh, believe God or not believe God. You know, when God uh, had created the angels way before he created man, and one of those angels was this powerful, great 
wonderful, beautiful, perfect, innocent angel, which was called Lucifer, which was called, which we call Satan, you know. And he was without a flaw. He was perfect in all his ways. And the Bible says that he went up and down on the coals of fire before God. And he was called the covering angel, uh, 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 whatever that is. Maybe his wings maybe covered the throne or, or whatever it was that he was this all wonderful, powerful angel. And he lived within the sovereignty of God, that God had created him for that particular purpose. But one day the Bible says that because of his uh, beauty, that he was lifted up and iniquity was found in him. He became a sinner because of his own beauty. Now, did God cause Satan to, to uh, rebel against him? It was that within that creation of those angels, that they had that choice that they could choose God or not choose God. And Lucifer, he rebelled against God. And he said, I will make my home in the north like the Most High, and I will lift myself up, and I will be like the Most High God. And he drew with him a, a, a number of angels that it says in the book of Jude that they left their first estate. They were not thrown out of their first estate. They were not evicted from their first estate. It says they left their first estate. And they left that position because God gave them that free will. Does that mean that God doesn't have sovereign over all things? No. It only, it, I, I believe it increases his sovereignty by allowing men to have that free will. But know this, that God has not given up his position as king, as judge, and ruler. And one day, at the end of the age, of this age, the Bible says that God will judge all men according to the deeds done in the body. And Lucifer and his followers, the Bible says that they will be cast into a lake of fire. And all those that follow him, and all those that believe like him, and all those that reject God will be cast into a lake of fire. There will be no escape. There will be no way out. There will be no great lawyer that you can get to, to, to go bail for you and, and get you out of that circumstance. The sovereign God will have his way in the end after you've had your choice. So choose you this day whom you will serve. You decide. Will you have Jesus or will you continue in the life that you are without God and hope for the best. There is no hope beyond the grave if you don't have Christ in your life, okay? So the uh, idea is why would you want to go to hell when you can go to heaven? Why choose death when you can choose life? But you have to believe. You have to accept the fact that Jesus came into this world, shed his blood for your sins, and then you can have eternal life. Now we're going to continue uh, next week with uh, uh, chapter 1, the Lord willing, with verse 15, and we'll go on with that, and we will uh, continue reading. Now, uh, as I close this morning, I want to again offer the opportunity for anyone watching this program that if you want to receive Christ into your life, Never mind about what this uh, uh, Christian, oh, if that's a Christian, I don't want to be. Never mind about that. Never mind about that because God will judge all these things. But it's between you and God, nobody else. Choose this day. Choose God and live. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your uh, gift of life that you've given us. Help us, Lord those watching this program that they might choose life and I know there are some out there who are hungry for your word Lord but they they're disillusioned by all the things that are going on and Lord I want you to touch their hearts right now help them Lord uh, by your spirit to understand that there is only one way 
and that they must receive Jesus into their lives. Lord, we pray for them, Lord. There are some out there that are, who have a physical affliction. They have a pain and they have suffering and in some way, Lord. And Lord, uh, uh, to show, Lord, uh, your great power, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would heal them and touch their bodies right now. Lord, that they might see your power and that it might help them that they might believe, we pray. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, if you have asked Jesus to come into your life today, find a church near wherever you live. Find a church there that, that believes in Jesus and that is a full gospel church that preaches the Bible and begin to attend those services. It's necessary. God ordained the church for that very purpose so that you might be lifted up, edified, and that you might grow in Christ. Amen. Now, huh? Right, can they hear me? Yeah. Sure, you can hear you. You got the mic up. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine, not mine, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy torn crown brow. Lead me to God. We need to be reminded to be at the foot of the cross. And we've got to crown him. The Lord of all. He's not just the Lord of God. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Let the God that we serve. only love him only in the measure that we love and honor his word. No more, no less. We've got to learn. You say, well, Joe, I know all about it. Well, I'm 80 years old pretty soon, and I'm still learning. But you know, we're prone to forget, huh? to honor his word. And I'm sure we all know, we're all a little tired here, uh, how do you honor God's word? How do we? We're aware of his word, we hear it, we read it, we have it in our memory bank, uh, written on a tablet of our heart, but uh, to honor it means to put it into practice, to do it. And we're prone to forget that. A lot of times we get away from it. Oh, I love you. Now let's prove it. Jesus did say, if you love me, that little word, if, Make a big difference. If you love me, prove it. He really didn't say prove it, but he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, keep my word. So we're called to honor his word. 
every day of our life. We're going to make it. I know that I can make it. Are we going to make it? Yeah. Jesus gave it the will. Jesus put it in my will. Yeah. Remember, he gave it the will. We exercise that will. We can honor him, we can dishonor him. We can honor his word, we can dishonor his word or not do it. Jesus put it in my will to reach the new Jerusalem. Each step is a thrill. Though the devil worries against me, and he does, each step that I climb, I see the light to the in the distance. It's just a matter of time. And I really believe that time is short. I'm not saying this because I'm up in years, but I will say this to the teenagers, time is short. This world is running out of time, and I believe soon, we keep saying it, and again, and do we mean it? Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Huh? Young and old, even the teenagers, huh? the world is ripe for great events. How many of you believe that? Yeah. Huh? The world is ripe for great catastrophes. But I'm not here to intimidate anybody, but uh, it's just a reminder uh, that come what may, Brother Bob, come what may, we're going to make it. Uh, we're going to stay firm. We're going to go all the way. It's not enough to make it halfway. It's not enough to make it. I almost made it. I almost, almost is not enough. We've got to go all the way. God help us. You know, sometimes we have little songs and they, uh, you might say, well, what is this song, you know? And here's, this is a song that is a very inspirational song and uh, helps us to meditate and think about some of the things that, how God is moving in our lives, you know? And, uh, and they were planning to sing another song, but they just decided this song. They decided that it was this song that they wanted to sing. But this song that they're going to sing goes along with my message. And they didn't even know it. All right? So I, I don't know over here. We got some, somebody's working under, the, under our sleeves over here. Okay? So this is uh, last night I saw a man. I saw a man. Last night I dreamed. Stop. 
years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I'd learn. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurn. Till my guilty soul implore return to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was made and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did spend at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. I know the promises of God are really true And I'm going to a city that's brand new You won't find any trouble in that land But for this next mile I need a helping hand I call on Jesus Come and set me free Jesus Carry me this time I flee I don't think I can make it without you Lord, carry me for just a mile or two. Oh, trials are something we all go through. And the best of us will have to face a few. When they get me down and no one sees I call on Jesus, come and set me free. Jesus, carry me this time, I plead. I don't think I can make it without you. Lord, carry me for just a mile or two. 
Lord, carry me for just a mile or two. Now Jesus is the only way. He's the only name you'll hear on that day. What price will you upon the water one sweet day. He healed the blind and lame, all glory to his name. Jesus is the only way. truth and the life I'm here to say. He gave his life for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus is the He's the only way, folks.